Okay. So my name is Suzanne Grossman. I direct career services for the Mark School of Public and International Affairs at Baruch College. I'm here with Marnie Smith, who's the assistant director, Mark's Career Services. And we're pleased to welcome Nick Perella from the New York State Senate. He is the director of student programs for the New York State Senate and has been in that role for 10 years. And um, this event is for CUNY graduate students who are interested in the New York State Senate Fellowship Programs. It's going to be pretty informal. Um, Nick is going to talk for a little bit, share information about the programs, and we'll open it up for questions. So I just hold your questions until he's done talking in case your question gets answered, but then we'll let people unmute themselves or put in the chat. Um, so I'll turn it over to Nick at this point. Okay, great. Uh, Suzanne, thank you so much um, for um, setting this up and, uh, and both Marnie and Jenny as well. Um, thank you for giving me the opportunity um, to come and um, speak. Uh, <clears throat> and thank you to all the students who took time out of their day to come and, uh, and meet with us here. Um, again, my name is Nick Perella. I'm the Director of Student Programs here at the New York State Senate. And I'm gonna spend a little bit of time talking about our Graduate Senate Fellowship Program, uh, which I think is a wonderful opportunity for um, students who are graduating with a graduate level degree to come and get some practical work experience um, here in the New York State Senate in Albany. This is a program that is based out of Albany. Um, so if you would be um, selected to the program, you know, you would move um, to Albany. It is an on-site experiential learning program. And there's a couple different fellowship lines. Um, we can kind of talk a little bit about those. Uh, we have legislative fellowships available. Those fellowship placements are to the office of an elected New York State Senator. And uh, those uh, opportunities, you know, they give you a chance to really see what it is like um, to kind of be working in an office where uh, a member is representing a constituency, a certain portion um, of New York State. And uh, those fellowships, you have the opportunity to really kind of learn. Um, well, I think all the fellowships, you have a op great opportunity to learn about the legislative process. But in the legislative fellowships, um, you know, you're there kind of in service to a member um, of the Senate. So you're going to be working on policy areas uh, that that particular senator um, is interested in, or maybe even has committee assignments um, too. Uh, we also have <clears throat> uh, fel uh, specialty fellowship lines. There's three different lines, uh, specialty fellowships, and we have one fellowship in each of the three lines. So the, the three lines, one are the Richard J. Roth Fellowship, which um, for those of you who are interested in communications or public relations, uh, that fellowship assignment is to the Senate Majority Press Office. So you will be doing all things media related, uh, writing speeches, talking points, press releases, um, covering press conferences, following the news of what is going on um, in the state. We also have uh, the James Begain Fellowship, which is our fellowship that is related to the Majority Finance Committee. Um, so for those students who have experience um, and really sort of a love for finance, public finance and numbers. Um, that uh, fellowship again goes to the majority finance committee where you learn all about the New York state budget process. And the budget process, um, if, if people have been following, um, it looks like we may go over um, $200 billion this year for New York State's entire budget, which is actually due within um, 15 days, essentially. It's due by April 1st. Um, negotiations are going to be commencing, and they've been going on trying to figure out how um, to put this all together. The third um, specialty fellowship line is the Richard Wiebe Fellowship. That position is to the uh, Senate Majority Council Program Office. Um, so if anyone has a legal background, um, where maybe you had like a law degree before you came um, to graduate school for an MPA or an MPP. Um, that position typically is filled by a student um, who has a legal background. So those fellowship lines um, are what constitute 
um, our, our fellowship program. Um, we typically try to take up to 16 total fellows each year. Um, 13 of those 16 are legislative fellows. And then again, we have those three specialty lines where there's one fellowship for each of the three. And the stipend, um, because you do get paid for this fellowship is $40,000, uh, which I think is you know, very, you know, very good deal. Um, and the time period for the fellowship is mid-September until the following mid-June. So it's basically a nine month program. Um, you're here for essentially three quarters of one calendar year, if you wanna look at it that way. Um, but you are kind of getting a sense of how the rhythms of the New York State Legislature works over the course of that time. When you arrive in September, um, those first few months are kind of spent just getting your, your feet wet, getting some research type projects and sort of learning, you know, who the players are. Um, and, you know, kind of, it's a great chance to really get to know if you're a legislative fellow, it's a great chance to get to know your member. Um, what's the constituency that he or she represents? What are the issues that are really on the minds of the people who live in those communities? And then once January starts, when the legislative session starts, you know, then you're really getting into the legislative season, which runs from January through June. Um, the, the Senate is in session typically from that uh, time period, January to June, they're usually here three to four days a week in session. So that's when they're actually doing, you know, kind of their legislating and passing um, laws. Um, and you're sort of getting all of that type of experience. <clears throat> Um, and I see just very briefly in the chat section, are all, there was a question, are all fellowship lines eligible um, for master's students? So as long as you have completed your master's degree, um, by the time the fellowship starts in September, you would be eligible to apply. So I know typically uh, May is, is the typical graduation uh, time period. So if you were graduating in May of this year, in just a couple short months, first off, congratulations to those of you who are um, close, very close, almost at the finish line. Uh, those are typically the students that would apply um, if you're getting uh, that graduate degree awarded to you this May. Uh, <clears throat> so, oh, you're very welcome. And, you know, this is an opportunity again for, you know, students to come here and really see uh, what it is like for New York State policy making. Um, I always like to say that a large portion, uh, an overwhelming majority of the governmental services that you receive come from state and local government. And so it's really nice to be able to see, you know, how that process plays out. How do they decide how much to spend on education or healthcare or transportation um, or, you know, uh, state parks and historic sites, everything, you know, from A, a to Z when it comes to, to the types of issues that you come across. Um, has some imprint uh, with, you know, state legislative action. So you're getting to see that uh, process. You're also getting to see the budget process up close and in person, which can be very, very interesting, especially the month of March, uh, which we are currently in. <clears throat> uh, the month of March is really active in terms of budget negotiations, what's going to be in, what's going to be out and how that document all comes together because both houses of the state legislature, both the state assembly and the state senate have to agree along with the governor of the state. And there has to be a three-way agreement between everything um, for this to be signed into law and actually to be then be implemented. So um, this is a, a a career in public policy, even public administration or just public service in general, you know, this type of fellowship, I think really kind of, you know, gets your foot in the door and opens up um, opportunities, uh, you know, for you to kind of get into that career path. Um, I uh, have a question here, looks like from Carla. Um, it says, if you are, I, I, I presume that meant if you're not, okay, yep. If you're not graduating yet, uh, every how long does the fellowship applications are posted? So great question. Uh, every year, typically from January through April is when we recruit for the fellowships. Although, I mean, I say January, April is kind of the, the, you know, the most busy time to recruit, but I actually, recruiting for me has become a 12 month endeavor. Um, it's just that, you know, really the period when we're looking for um, new fellows is January, um, you know, through April for that application um, side of things. 
this year's application deadline is uh, April 30th. And um, <clears throat> what we do there is we take all the applications, we review them, and then uh, we have students do, uh, we conduct interviews. Uh, we usually spend the month of May and probably half of June conducting interviews for candidates who apply. And then we make our selections. And then we let students know, I like to typically let them know by um, early July, early to mid July. Um, and that way, if they are selected and they're from out of the area, then um, you know you would be, you have to move up here. So you, it gives you some time to find accommodations in the Albany area. And then we typically start um, in the mid, middle of September. Uh, we do an orientation for the first four or five days, and then we get you placed into your offices and, and there you go, you're, you're right on your way learning all about everything you wanted to know, but we're afraid to ask about New York state government. Um, so it's, it's a great time. Uh, I should mention too that I'm a former Senate fellow myself. Uh, I'm kind of dating myself a little bit here, but 2002, 2003, um, I uh, was selected to do the fellowship and I was the Roth fellow. So I was in the press office. So um, I got a chance to really work on uh, a lot of writing, a lot of press releases, a lot of talking points. I got to, um, during my time um, in that office, I, I, after the fellowship, I was hired on, which I'll get into in a minute. I, I was hired on and I stayed another five years um, in that office and sort of during that time frame was the revolution I like to say in, in technology because that's when blogs were born and I think at the time that I left in 2008 I was probably following 30 different um, blogs that were related to state government just to keep up with the news um, and I'm sure that's mushroomed 13 years later and to, to ever more um, of those so <clears throat> um, you know this one of the nice things about this fellowship is that sometimes it can turn into a full-time position um, you know, for you after the fellowship. I typically each year will have somewhere around half of the class um, find positions, full-time positions after the fellowship is over, which I think is great. We have had um, several fellows who have gone on, if they don't stay in the Senate, they've gone on to work in the state assembly or they've gone on to work in the executive branch somewhere, either in the governor's office um, or in an administrative capacity at one of the New York state agencies. Uh, one of my former fellows is actually an administrative law judge here in Albany. Um, so he kind of took his career uh, to the judiciary. Um, and then there's others that have gone on to do work in sort of um, advocacy and lobbying, interest groups, that kind of thing. I had a fellow from CUNY a few years ago um, who now is, uh, I believe he is still at the New York City Office of Management and Budget, NYCOMB. Um, he was a finance fellow, came here, uh, was Javier Santiago, and um, you know really did a great job and then and turned that into a position where he's, I, I believe he's still at NYCOMB, uh, sort of working on uh, financial issues down in the city. Um, so it's uh, and not only an opportunity to learn more about the government here in the state, but it can turn into um, the beginning of a career path for you. And that's that's how it worked for me. As I mentioned before, um, I was hired on after the fellowship, got an opportunity to stay here. Um, I stayed until 2008. I left briefly to go do uh, some PR and communications work at uh, the New York State Bar Association um, and then sort of at the time for me was a, I thought was a dream job, student programs here, it kind of, it opened up um, and I, I went for it. And, you know, the rest of his history, 10, 10 plus years later, uh, you know, we're, we're still, uh, you know, doing it. And I, I enjoy providing and uh, helping people find these types of opportunities um, to uh, further their career in the public sector. So, but if you will indulge me for a second, I'll share um, our website, and I know, thank you, Suzanne, uh, for posting the fellowship link in to the chat room. Um, hopefully, if this worked, you should be looking at a screen that says New York Senate Graduate Fellowships. And so, I'll take you a little bit through this page, gives you a little information. If I if scroll down here, we have a program brochure. At that top, in the, uh, the blue section up on top, you have the key dates there. It says January through April, application period. Again, as I mentioned, May and June, we do our interviews. Select the fellows in July. 
do a brief uh, four or five day orientation in September, and then the length of the fellowship September through the following June. And this brochure gives you a little bit of, <clears throat> excuse me, information regarding uh, the, fellow, the different fellowship lines, eligibility and expectations. Uh, we do have an expectation that you will be working at least a minimum of 35 hours per week. Uh, and uh, that's you know Monday through Friday. Sometimes longer hours are necessary uh, beyond 5 p.m. or sometimes on a weekend. That's kind of dictated by the legislative schedule. That's not really all the time, um, but during budget um, certainly is one of those times uh, of the year when you might expect to be working you know more than just the the typical 35 hours. Um, on our brochure there, you'll see how to apply. If I can zoom in for a little bit here and see that maybe a little bit better. Um, there is a checklist of items, and we'll get to the application in a second, but checklist of items that we want you to provide with your application. So you do need to find your official school transcripts, both for undergrad and grad. We do ask that you, um, you know, do provide those transcripts for both. Uh, one, a single page resume, three confidential letters of reference, from persons familiar with the applicant's academic abilities, which <clears throat> I always say, ask recommenders that you are familiar with and who you know, you know, would give you a great recommendation. Uh, there's a writing sample uh, at the graduate level, six to eight pages, uh, which I know many of you probably write papers that are way longer than six to eight pages, but uh, a single page memoranda, policy proposal and rebuttal. So this is a one page proposal and a one page rebuttal to that proposal. And then a single page personal statement, kind of uh, telling me about yourself, you know, and why you're interested in the Senate Fellows Program, what you're hoping to get out of it uh, and that sort of thing. Housing is the responsibility of the student. So again, because this is an on-site experiential learning program, you, you do need to move to Albany. And so the housing, um, you know, is on the student to find. Throughout the years, I, I've never had somebody tell me that they couldn't participate in the program because they, they were unable to find housing. So around the local local capital area, um, there are plenty of um, you know, sources that you can use uh, to find uh, living accommodations. We have our contact information there, uh, both email and website. We are on Facebook as well. Um, I always tell folks if you wanna go ahead and you know, give us a like on our, our Facebook page, it's, little promotion there, um, feel free to do that. And <clears throat> we can take a quick look at the application, which should appear now on your screen. Um, the top part is sort of the, the typical contact information. Then um, in addition to the legislative fellowship, which everyone ends up getting uh, considered for, you can also let us know if you're interested in the Roth, the Begin or the Weeby. Um, and you can rank those in terms of your order of interest if, if that's something that's interesting to you. Uh, fill out your education, any special skills. This preferred policy areas, um, this is where we ask you to give us some information about yourself and to talk about or think about some of the policy areas that you might be interested in working on. And that's uh, one of the things we do try and do is match up a student with their policy interests with a senator that works in those areas. Um, this doesn't mean that that's the only thing that you'll be working on, um, but it at least kind of gives you uh, an opening into seeing some of the policy areas that, uh, that you're interested in. So we always ask for students to tell us this. Here are some of the standing committees in the New York State Senate. And again, it really kind of runs the gamut on issues from aging and agriculture, you know, all the way down to transportation, and veterans, homeland security, military affairs, and women's issues. Um, there were a few new committees um, added this year as well. There's another, there's actually a, a second cities committee and there's one on procurement um, uh, and contracts. So government contracts. So there's a few out there. Uh, and again, you can choose from those and put those in your, your three areas of up here in your preferred policy areas. Um, and then we ask you to list your references, which you'll see there, one, two, and three. Um, and then the bottom has a nice little application checklist. So as you are providing these materials, you can cross them off, um, you know, kind of for yourself to know that you have everything. 
So that is the application. <clears throat> and you've got the committees there. And we are um, open to all majors, right? So it doesn't matter whether you're an MPP student or an MPA um, or political science, we're open to all majors. Um, so, you know, we, we do like to have a diverse background there in terms of student interests and what, uh, you know, what type of areas they want to work on. There, there's a ton, as you can see there with the standing committees, um, you know, higher ed, health, finance. I mean, it's just a lot of issues, you know, and you can just see just from this list how many different types of issues and sub issues that the New York State Legislature, you know, ends up having to tackle in any given um, legislative year, so. But um, I will be fine uh, to kind of leave it there. I find these work um, better if I kind of just be quiet for a bit and let you guys ask any questions that you might have. <clears throat> and I see here in the, um, we just take a look here in the chat room. We have one from Andrew. How much input do you have in working with particular senators or do you just get assigned paired with one? Um, so typically uh, that would be, if you wanted to tell me in your personal statement, if there was a senator particularly that you'd be interested in, you know, you can do that in the personal statement. I can't guarantee that I will be able to get you with that senator because they may not request. Um, that, that also factors in is which offices request to host a fellow because not all uh, 63 senators request each year. But we do try and match up to the best of um, our ability here, students and their interests with offices that are working in those areas. Um, you know, we, we do try to do that um, as much as possible. I hope, uh, I hope that answered that question. Um, and then I have one from Emerson. Is this application available only um, through the mail? So you can actually print out this application um, and fill it out and then collect all of the application materials. Uh, I've I found over the years that students like to collect all the application materials, then put it in one envelope and then just mail it to me. Um, there are some students who like to collect the materials and they make a one big PDF and email it to me, which is also fine. The only thing that I will say there is that you may have recommenders who are going to write you letters of recommendations that don't want you to see what they wrote. Um, and so in that case, you know, you could scan all the other materials outside of the letters of reference and then just have the recommenders send those reference letters to me, just mail them to me um, in their envelopes. I, I would like the reference letters to be signed um, and on letterhead to the extent possible. And another question from Raven, are, associate, are associate's degrees required uh, within the undergrad transcript? If you can, if you can find that, um, that would be great. Um, otherwise, if you could just do undergrad and grad, we'll take those two. And I, for the chat room, I think that is the, the last question. Um, I'll take other questions here as well if people. Um, if if anybody like... wants to, if you want to unmute yourself too or raise your hand and, and we can unmute you or you can see you may have the ability to do that. Um, we're happy to have folks do that as well. Okay, so I see um, Ashik has asked a question. Is there um, a minimum GPA? Uh, we, I typically say 3.0. Um, I know we kind of do that for our undergrad and, um, you know, but I, I don't believe that GPA is everything. You know, I, I kind of take a look at the application in total to see, you know, what a student has put together um, in terms of their writing, their ability to communicate. Also too, it comes, a lot of it comes down to the, the interview uh, stage as well. Right, um, because each student who is selected for an interview does have to participate in an interview. Um, you know, we glean a lot of information from that interview. Now, um, the interviews will mostly be like this. Um, I use a platform called Blue Jeans, which is very similar to Zoom um, in that respect. We used it last year, and I think it worked pretty well. We'll probably continue again doing those um, before 
uh, the, the pandemic, these interviews were in person, um, but I, I think we're probably gonna be using the virtual format again for this year. I got a question from Catherine. Is it imperative that we keep our resume to a single page? Uh, it's helpful, but if you have a if you have a lot of things on there, I mean, you can go to a second page. That's no problem. I have a question, uh, Nick, about the paper applications because I suspect you know students don't have access to li the library anymore and and things like that. Or or the in terms of like, will you accept an e signature? I know you were saying like the faculty wanted a signature. Like, is that okay? Yes, yeah, e-signatures are fine. Okay, and I think Marty, uh, they're just like, there's some online programs that people want to fill out. Marty, could you put in the chat what the, there's like um, programs to fill out forms. <laughs> this just helps students out in terms of um, some of that. Other questions? Yeah, and keep in mind if if you you know after the the event today if if you have additional questions, um, you know I, I'm happy to I will put my contact information in here, and I'm happy to chat um, and answer any of those questions. And I'll put my email in and my phone number. Right, there is a question from Amy. It is a good question. If a student um, graduates, or do you only consider the recent grads? So there's my contact information, my email, and then the telephone number for the student programs office. Um, so please feel free to ask um, questions. I, I have one from Amy. Uh, do you only consider recent grads? We typically, um, you know, in terms of who we're considering, again, it's students who are graduating you know, really this spring, because you do have to have the graduate degree in hand. Um, but if students have graduated within the past six to 12 months, um, you know, we may consider them as well. Okay, Suzanne asked, can you tell us uh, about how many apply overall? Um, typically, I have somewhere between, you know, last year was a, a little bit of a different year. Um, given everything that was going on, but typically I see between 30 and 40 applicants. And I think that also answered Michael's question too. Um, you know, again, with 30 to 40 applicants and we take up to 16, like this year we have 14 fellows with us. Um, you know, so you can kind of do the math there um, of course, it's going to depend upon a given year of how many applicants I receive. Um, <clears throat> but we do look for, you know, we look for people who have well-rounded experience, right? So, and in many cases, uh, some of you have, will have had prior internships, um, which is also fine to list on your resume as well. Emerson has asked the exact deadline, um, April 30th this year. Um, see, Jenny in there is asking the difference between the assembly fellowship and my fellowship. Uh, I think the main differences there are well, a couple. One, the, the duration. I believe the assembly fellowship only runs session long from January to June, um, whereas ours goes from September through the following June. So we have about three months uh, longer um, of a fellow, well, actually kind of almost four, but um, and then the stipend is different. I don't know what the assembly's um, stipend is, but ours is 40,000. So again, you're working longer, but you are getting um, you know, a, a larger stipend uh, for that length. Um, and so <clears throat> I think right logistically, those are kind of the, the major ones. I don't, I'm not sure how many each year the assembly um, selects. Um, I, I think in the past I had been told that they really maybe take only 10 or 11, whereas we take up to 16. 
Um, I think the work is generally going to be very similar. Um, it's just the other legislative house in the New York State Legislature. Um, so, but I, I think the, you know, the typical work would be very similar. A lot of you are going to be doing, you know, researching bills, uh, potentially drafting legislation, uh, meeting with constituents, whether that's virtually, you know, is yet to be seen as we, we get into the next six months to nine months. But, um, you know, there's a heavy aspect of that too, constituent relations, um, you know, and really kind of just seeing the process, which I think is very similar for both houses. Okay, uh, Marnie asked, um, in terms of housing in Albany, anything I can share about the process that students go through moving and adjusting to Albany? Uh, you know, I think there's, you know, when they, a lot of the students will come up here maybe late summer to try and, and make sure that they secure housing before the program starts. You know, we definitely want you to have that before the program starts all kind of taken care of. Um, I think in terms of adjusting to Albany, um, it's definitely going to be different than you know, New York City. I, I think the cost of living is, is much less up here, but there are you know, a lot of things to do. Um, it's the capital of New York State. There are museums, uh, there are plenty of parks um, and, and tons of things to do, shopping centers you know, and, and things of that nature. And let's, let's hope that as we go further here, more and more things can open up. Um, so that there's, you know, you can see performing arts. We have um, SPAC up here, which is a Saratoga Performing Arts Center, uh, which is very, very busy in the summer, hopefully they'll, with concerts and things like that. And hopefully they're able to um, be able to get some of those uh, scheduled this summer for, for attendees. Uh, but there are a lot of really good things to do here in the capital region. So um, I think the adjusting is, uh, I've never had someone, you know, come to me and say that it's been a difficult um, adjustment uh, period. So it's, it's pretty good. And like I said, I think the cost of living um, is going to be uh, much less than what you'd find in New York City. Any other questions for Nick? Okay. Yeah, Michael has a question about the policy proposal and the policy um, rebuttal. So I always uh, tell students to think of this assignment as there ought to be a law. Um, you're going to analyze or even, you know, if you see something that you think um, maybe should be looked at as a potential public policy, we ask you to come up with a one page memoranda uh, of a proposal in support of why you think this proposal should be enacted. So, you know, citing evidence. Um, why you think it would be a good uh, proposal to enact. And then we ask you to turn around and do a rebuttal to that proposal and sort of analyze some of the maybe unintended consequences or some of the reasons why you wouldn't maybe want to enact this policy. And the reason we do this is because in many instances in your line of work that you're going to be looking at, you are going to be bombarded with information from all sides of a different policy area. And I always say there's more than two. A lot of times there's more than two sides to an issue. And so we want students to be able to grapple with that um, because it's, it's the experience you're gonna get in offices, especially when it's a hot button issue and there's intense feelings on both sides. Um, you know, your member, your Senator is going to get lobbied. Um, you know, maybe if they're on the fence and they don't know which way they're gonna vote on a particular proposal. And so I think it's very helpful um, for students to be able to converse in that language of, okay, if we enact this policy, here's what's going to happen. Um, if we don't, here's what's going to happen, um, you know, in both the good and the bad, right? Because, you know, the members only have one vote on any particular piece of legislation um, and they want to be as well informed uh, as possible. And so, you know, they want to have that information at their fingertips and to be able to go through a potential policy and pick out the positives and the drawbacks and to be able to articulate that to a member um, that will serve you really well. Marnie uh, just had a question here. Would you be able to elaborate on the interview process and the different stages? Yeah, so once we accept the applications and we, we get them here, I usually take about a week or two to re read through and then schedule interviews 
Um, I try to do it the middle of May until about the middle of June. I know, you know, students have finals to prepare for um, and that. And then we schedule your interview. The interview is typically with a panel of maybe three or four or five other people, um, both inside and outside the Senate. Um, you know, and a lot of them have, you know, at least prior connections to this program. Um, and so we kind of ask you different questions in an interview phase. And then after the interview, um, you know, we kind of go back and take a look and see which, you know, fellowship applicants do we want to invite to the program. And the interview um, is going to be virtual. Um, I, I think probably by, you know, June, May and June, we'll still be living in that virtual world. So, you know, and again, as I said, we use Blue Jeans platform last year. It's extremely easy to get onto your computer. Um, and it's, uh, it works pretty well. I can't remember if you talked about this. Um, I know you said everyone's working in person, but can you clarify just in terms of like, what that is that every day or what does that look like? Yeah, I, you know, right now, our both of our fellows and our undergrads, um, you know, a lot of them are here in person, some are in person some days and working from home other days. It really does depend upon the individual office and how their staff has um, things parceled out. Again, you know, six months from now, my hope is that many, if not all, um, of the staff will be, you know, back in person on a regular basis here. But there, you know, there, there may be times where, you know, the, the student would have to work virtually. And we do um, you know, have VPN access. So one of the nice things is if that if that ends up being the case for some fellows, that they can, um, you know, work from home with VPN access. We do have that so that, you know, you're able to get the files on your work computer, you know, on your laptop or, you know, your home personal computer. Any other questions before we wrap up? Right. I think you've covered a great deal for us today. Mm -hmm. It's a very uh, unique, special, uh, wonderful opportunity for our students. And I hope you will receive a lot of CUNY applications this year. Um, and everybody uh, has uh, your contact information, Nick, because I know that email address goes straight to you, that student. Oh, you, you gave your other email address too. OK, um, perfect. So um, folks know how to follow up with you. And um, yeah, please join me in thanking Nick Perella for being with us here today. We already have someone confirming that he is applying. <laughs> so oh, great, next yes, yeah. That's great. Sure, and the April, 30, you know, the April 30th deadline should give people plenty of time to you know, get those letters and, and work on everything. Right. Yeah. If you're thinking of applying, I, I would I would definitely suggest reaching out to your professors now to give them enough time, um, to, you know, to write you a really good le uh, recommendation letter. Yep. Nice. And, and, and thank you all for um, your time today. And, um, you know, Suzanne, Marnie and, and Jenny, thank you so much um, for inviting me to yeah. talk about the fellowship program. I, I hope to see uh, many of you applying. All right. Thank you and have a great day, everybody. Stay safe, be well, take care. Thanks everyone. Take care now.